Well, the smile is a human gesture that we think is uh, normal every day, doesn't have a history in some ways. Uh, my book uh, is uh, seeking to make a historical object, if you like, of the smile by looking at it at a particular, in a particular place, at a particular time, which I argue uh, uh, is a moment of smile revolution, if you like, which changes the way in which people have been smiling, the sort of uh, the template for smiling uh, uh, over the ages, and produces something like uh, the modern smile that we're used to today. When we only walk down the, the street and see the billboards and uh, look on TV, we're endlessly seeing politicians or film stars or whatever smiling, showing their white teeth. It's that, that smile, that white tooth smile, uh, which suddenly emerges at the end of uh, the 18th century uh, in France and produces what I've called the French smile revolution. A particular moment where we suddenly realize something important has changed is in 1787 when the court painter uh, Madame Vigée Lebrun uh, presents a self-portrait of herself obviously with her child on her lap and it's shown in the Louvre uh, in 1787 uh, and produces a scandal. People say this is extraordinary, we've never seen a smile like this, this is somehow uh, totally undignified and wrong to smile in this way. How is she smiling? She's smiling and showing her white teeth. Now we know there's a set of conventions in fact about how people should smile in art which go back actually beyond the Renaissance but they've really strengthened in the Renaissance. Basically you only open your mouth in a painting uh, to show that you are either plebeian, uh, you're from the lower orders in other words, or you're, you may be insane or in, uh, your, your reason may be affected in some way. Children smile because of course they haven't reached the age of reason or, or else you're in the grip of some extraordinarily strong uh, emotion and your mouth will open and it will show what's, what's inside. But in por portraiture that's not the way to smile. So really there is in, uh, happening in 1787 a sort of revolution in the way that the smile is represented in Western art. That's important, but my argument is that that smile has a history, an archaeology, if you like, of that smile, going back certainly over the previous century uh, in, in, in Paris. And I trace the, the two main developments uh, in this, I think, really. And one of them is very down-to-earth and very straightforward and very material, and that is the emergence of dentistry. Uh, before, in, in Western Europe, uh, there is tooth pulling. You have a problem with your teeth, you pull it out. That's the end of the story. So what they call operators for the teeth or tooth pullers or tooth drawers, that's what happens uh, with, uh, around the mouth, if you like, uh, over the uh, early Renaissance and the early modern uh, period. From the early 18th century, you suddenly see the emergence of a, a, a dental science, if you like, a surgery of the mouth, which is moreover performed by a group of individuals trained in surgery who call themselves dentists or dental surgeons uh, for the first time. This is when the word comes into, into the, uh, the French and then the English language. Um, and dentistry then is there as a, a sort of science of prevention. You keep the teeth, you keep, you don't just you know, have them out when, 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 when they're giving you trouble. You look after you, your teeth and there's a whole sort of, in fact, very interesting uh, set of uh, techniques and technologies that they have. This is the period in which the toothbrush emerges in the West for the first time, for example. People want to look after their, uh, after their, their, their teeth. And so that's a very important change, a, a sort of technology of mouth care, which is uh, emerging at this time. But there's another very important development which I think interpenetrates uh, with those, uh, which is that the emergence of a cult of sensibility and politeness. It has roots, civility and politeness and chivalry indeed go back uh, in, in Western European history. But it's in this period that there really is a rather important mutation. Around the middle of the 18th century, we see the emergence of new types of smiles being represented in uh, fiction, in, uh, particularly in the novels of Samuel Richardson, Clarissa and Pamela, but then 1761, Jean-Jacques Rousseau's uh, La Nouvelle Héloïse. We see a new type of heroine who smiles in a new type of way, and it is a smile which 
isn't a sort of ironic or a closed uh, gesture, it's an expansive and open uh, gesture where one reveals oneself as available, if you like, and uh, uh, to the person you're smiling at, but in some ways there's a sort of like smiling contagion uh, between, between you, and it reveals something which is part of the innermost part uh, of your personality and, and subjectivity. Before, smiles tended to be ironic or disdainful or contemptuous, very de haut en bas, if you like. Now this is a sort of open, uh, egalitarian uh, uh, gesture. So the emergence of these two to, to, to sort of developments in the uh, uh, 18th century is bringing into place a new type of way of thinking about uh, smiling and the importance of the smile, the meaning of the smile, but also what you actually do when you smile, which is that you open your lips and you show, uh, show white, white teeth.